Okay, so here we are. The Sloth Planter Stevie. Dun dun dun. dun. Here are the things. Hook. Um. Okay, I start the new kits really slow. So we're just going to take our time. I did do some of the tension swatch. I didn't do all 14 rows because I'm lazy. But I did seven of them. And I measure pretty well. The tension swatch is just for you to see if um, your tension when you crochet is going to work out for the amount of yarn given for the size. Like if you make really big stitches, you'll use up the yarn before you get to the end. Um, since these kits, I've had trouble with running out of yarn. I tend to try to go a little smaller. So we're supposed to be around three and a quarter this way. And I'm just at three. And then 14 is supposed to be three inches. So half that because I did seven one and a half and I'm just right about there so to me lower uh, tighter tension is better than having too loose because you'll run out okay so this goes over your yarn colors and your stitches that you'll need um you know Chain one, work in rounds of half double crochet or chain three, work in rounds of double crochet, joining each round with a slip stitch at the beginning stitch of the round. A chain three at the beginning of the round counts as the first double crochet, crochet stitch. When double crochet increases in, indicated at the uh, beginning of the round, I can read. The stitches worked in the same place as the beginning of chain three. Okay, I know what that means. And we'll deal with that as we get to it. So... Um, I'm going to start with the one because I had two grays. I'm going to start with the one that I didn't do the swatch thingy in. Now, you got this one right here. Um, this is the loose end. I'm going to try to find the inside loose end because it, it just, um, it doesn't tumble the, the ball when you pull on it. So, I'm just basically trying to find the center area and then I'll pull it all out and find the end. Wow, this is a big, big center area. That's unfortunate. That's okay though, we'll survive. Let me know if you uh, see the end that we're looking for. Well, ha ha. We have done it. Okay. Well, it's been forever since I've done one of these. I had classes and busy time things. This will stop being an awful mess in a little bit. So. Here we go. Here's our yarn. So we're starting with the head. Color A is this gray. Then there's the white and the brown. RS is on um, right side. So right side and wrong side is like basically the outside that's going to be like facing you and then the inside. So if you are, if you are new and would like, certainly put a stitch marker on your right side when you start. To, to help you just keep track. But we are going to chain four and join to make a ring. So the first thing we need to do, like I said, we start very, very slow for the beginning of the kit on the assumption that um, this, is, this is beginners. We're gonna make a slip knot so how I do this, there's a lot of ways, but I just bring it around my thumb, bring the tail of the yarn around my thumb like so. And then I take this, which is going to be the working yarn. So the yarn connected to like the, the ball or the skein, 
working yarn, the end, tail. And just pinch that between my fingers, pull the loop on my thumb over, and then tighten down. It's much faster to do than to say. So now we have our loop. Loop goes on the hook, tighten down. You want it to be able to move. You don't want it too, too tight, but okay. Now, um, how you hold your yarn is kind of going to be up to you. Just, I've learned not to curl these fingers or they start to like ache. So I try to keep them all straight, but how tightly you hold it and how tightly you work is going to be your tension. So you want it to be able to flow, but we're trying to make small even stitches. So to chain four, a chain is, we got our tail here, we got our loop on our hook, we got our working yarn. We're just gonna press back against that working yarn, rotate the hook so that we're catching that yarn in that hook and pull through the loop on our hook, like so. And this is one chain. So now this is our chain here, this little V is our chain and this is the loop on our hook. We don't count that. This is one chain. Now we're gonna do it again. Press back against that yarn, rotate so you catch that. Pull through, two chains. And I usually move my hand up as I'm going to pinch where I was just to hold everything still. Now we're gonna do it again. Press back, rotate, Pull through, that's three. And one more for four. Four chains, so one, two, three, four, loop on our hook. Okay, so now that we've done this, we are going to join with a slip stitch the beginning chain to form a ring. So that's this one here. This little thing here is the edge of our slip knot. So we're not concerned with that horizontal piece. We're just going into under the loop of one of these, um, of the side of this V. So we're gonna go in here, right in here, under this one loop. Let me do that one more time. So this is the loop on our hook. This is the first slip stitch in. We're gonna grab that yarn, rotate so we're grabbing that yarn, and we're gonna pull it through that first loop, and then we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook to make a slip stitch, like so. So now the slip stitch is completed, and we're going to chain one. Okay, so we're gonna have this ring To work into. So we got this hole in the center. If you can see that, it, this is kind of a fuzzy yarn, so it's difficult to show. Anyway. Uh, okay. So gonna chain one back against that yarn, rotate to catch that, pull through the loop on our hook. And now we've chained one and we're going to do ha eight half double crochet into the ring. So if you want, you can put a stitch marker into the first one you make so that you, you know what it is. Let me grab a stitch marker. I have this kind, there's many kinds. So half double crochet and Here's this mess, right? So we got kind of this edge and this edge. Where we're gonna be working is into the center. And as we work, you'll be able to see the hole better because the yarn will be pulling the sides apart. But we're gonna go into this center because we're working into the ring now and not into the the stitch we slipped to. This is really fuzzy right here, but. This center here. Okay. 
So we've chained one. Now to do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over. So back against, press back against that yarn, rotate to grab it with your hook. This is the yarn over. And now we are going to insert into that opening. So I'm just going to go into the center here and go in. If you can see that. And then we're going to grab that yarn, pull it through so that there's three loops on our hook. And now you can definitely see the opening better now that we have the yarn holding it open. And then yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. So one, two, three. And now just to keep track, I'm going to put a stitch marker into the top here. So after you pull through, you have this you have the loop on your hook and then you have this V right here, that, that's the top of your half double crochet. So we're going to put that in there. And this sideways looking thing here, right here, these two loops, that's your chain one. So we don't mark that because we don't count it as a stitch. So that's one half double crochet. Um, and now we are going to do the rest. So yarn over, insert into that opening, yarn over and pull up a loop so that there's three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that's two. Now a thing I do often when doing these just to make sure that we're nice and, and small is I'll pull up a little, tighten, and then tighten this finger to pull that back down to tighten everything up. So this is two now. We have our second top of our half double right here. And we are going to keep going. So yarn over, insert into that opening, yarn over, pull up a loop. That's three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. I'm going to tighten a little. One, two, three. Let me keep going. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. And again. Okay. This is one, two, three, four, five. We need three more. So this is six, insert, pull up a loop. Oh wait, how many more do we need? Do we think I can count today? Probably not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, I can count three more. So one, one left. Okay, now. Now, like I said, this is this little sideways one that's a little slanted. This is our chain one. We're not worried about that. We're going to ignore that. And then all of these here are the tops of our half double crochets. And they tend to curl up like this. That's fine. They'll, um, as we work more, they'll lay flatter. We just want to be aware of that. Like working around here, if you see it can kind of look like these are your tops of your stitches here because of the way it curls. So you just want to make sure you're keeping track of that and not letting it get twisted. Um, and like I said, marking one of these will help because then you know you can follow the line. You know, you know it's these two loops and then these two loops and then these two loops here. So. Let's see what we need to do next. So we're going to join. And what that means is usually to the first stitch of the round you've just completed, you are going to do a slip stitch. So 
I'm going to leave this in here for now because it makes it easier to see. I'm going to insert my hook under both loops of the top of this half double crochet right here. So under both loops there. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull this loop through underneath the top of that stitch and then pull it through the loop on my hook like that. Tighten it down a little. And this is my slip. So that means when we come back around, we'll have this thing right here that's gonna look like it's the top of a, a half double crochet, but this is our slip stitch. So we'll have our slip stitch and our chain one at the beginning of every round that we don't work into. So this is the first round done and we'll do a stitch count real fast. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slip stitch. So we're going to chain one. So yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook to chain one. And then it wants two half double crochet in each stitch around. So we're gonna start here. And once I put this first one in, we're gonna move the stitch marker. So yarn over, insert now under both loops of this stitch, just like we just did. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now I'm going to take out my stitch marker and I'm gonna bring it over here. And this is the loop on our hook. This right here is the top of our first half double crochet we just made. So we're gonna slide that in there. And then like I said, this sort of sideways one, that's our chain one. This is our slip stitch. So when we get around over here, this will be the last stitch that we work into, not this and not this. So now two in each stitch around. So I'm going to put another half double crochet into the same spot that I just worked. That's two. Tighten down a little. Now here's our next stitch here. I'm going to put two into there. So under both loops here, being careful just to get just under both those loops and not under other things. Half double crochet. Another one into the same spot. This is four. Here's our next top of our stitch here. We're gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. For five, put another one in. Six. Okay, next one right here. Seven. Eight. Next one. Nine. Ten. Next one here, 11, oh, both loops there, 12, okay, next one's right here, 13, 14. Now, since we had eight stitches and we're doing two in each, that means 15 and 16 is our last stitch or our last stitch that we're working into. So insert right here is where we're going. And don't get confused by these little corners. You already worked into there. You can see the loops are going around this bar, right? So we're looking for a full stitch. So we're going to insert under both loops of that. One, two, like that. Okay, so 
the stitch we just finished, I caught a little loop here, if you can see that, that isn't supposed to be there, which happens sometimes. So this time I'm just going to tighten this, pull this yarn to tighten it down on my hook and try to tuck under there. Oh, no, come back. Like that, to get the rest of that in there so that our yarn flows, flows freely again. And then at the end of this round, we're joining to the top of this here. And there is our slip stitch, there's our chain. We're not worried about either of those. So we're just gonna slip stitch to this here. So under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull that loop through the loop on your hook. And that round is done. Okay, so the beginning of round three, these brackets that they show you are an instruction that you'll repeat the number of times it tells you. Um, and outside things outside of the brackets aren't repeated. So you don't, you only chain one once. You don't do it eight times. But then after you chain one, it's alternating half double crochet in the next and then two half double crochet in the next stitch after that. And then you start over again, half double crochet, two half double crochet in the next, all the way around. And then the following rounds, this is a common increase method. Um, they'll have something similar, except you'll step up the number of half double crochets you do without the, you know, before the increase each time. Um, so we're going to chain one. So yarn over and pull that through the loop on your hook. And we're going to do our first half double crochet into our first stitch here. So yarn over, <clears throat> insert under that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And now I'm going to move my stitch marker. Oh, see this here? This thing, I want that on my hook. So I'm gonna take my hook out and I'm gonna gently pull this up until we get past where that split happened. Put my hook back in through the whole loop, pull it back down. Now I'm gonna move my stitch marker. Now, when you're chaining one like this, um, rather than working in the round. You don't have to use a stitch marker, but for a beginner, I recommend it so that you can see what you're doing and that, um, and if you want, you can put one in the last stitch of the round too, to help you remember that you don't work into these two here, but I'll use it at least for now. Um, just for simplicity's sake. So that's our first half double crochet. Then the next thing is it wants an increase. So just like we did the round before, two half double crochet into this next stitch here. So again, we don't wanna work into this corner thing here. Okay, cause we already worked into that. These loops come down and around it. This is our next, next stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through both loops, or all three loops, sorry. And then again into the same spot. Increase. Now the following rows, I won't do this all the way around. Um, but for this first one, I will. So now in our next stitch here, we're going to go back to the beginning of the brackets and repeat. So one half double crochet. And then our next stitch here, two half double crochet. And we'll keep alternating around one. Sometimes I count these like that was one and this is two and three so that I know what interval that I'm on. One, two, 
two, three. Now this is a probably a decent time to demonstrate how um, a good tool to be able to have is to be able to identify by sight your increases. So each of these, you have the tops of your stitches that are inside these loops, you know, that we're going under when we work these. So they're inside. This is the edge of that bar. And then this is the other edge of that bar and going around it are these two loops. Okay. This is what a single crochet or single half double crochet going into here looks like. Now this here, we just did an increase. So you got the edge of the bar on this side and you got it over here. And then in the middle here, you have four. One, two, three, four. So this is what your increase looks like. So if you study that a little bit, you'll be able to pick out, okay, this is a, as long as you can find those corners, this is just one half double crochet. Okay, this one's two. It's got one, two, three, four. Um, so that is a helpful thing when counting these things to develop. Okay, so now we're doing one, one, two, one, and then, oh, I'm going to split a loop again. Look at that. Slip that out. Put that back in. One, two into here. And I'll demonstrate when we do like the next row, the beginning of it, I just won't take it all the way around. Okay, now when you're given these instructions in the brackets, unless it indicates otherwise, and if it's just telling you to repeat around, Whatever the last instruction in the bracket is, that should be what your last stitch is. So in this case, we're doing a half double crochet and then an increase. So two half double crochet into one stitch. Um, and that's how it'll line up this time. So we just did an increase. And then under this one for one half double crochet into this one with two half double crochet. And then we got our stitch marker marking our first stitch of the round here, our slip stitch to join, and our chain one. So we are going to join to finish this row. So we're going to slip stitch to our first stitch of the round here. And then for our next round, we are going, well, let's do a count first. So the stitch that we join to, we count. It's the first stitch of the round. And then we just joined, which means that this is now a slip stitch. We haven't done our chain one yet, but the ones that we don't count, the slip stitch and the chain one, this is the slip stitch. So this is the last stitch of the round we just worked. So starting here, we'll count around by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And then that's our slip stitch to join. So we got 24 stitches. We're where we want to be. Now we are going to chain one and this is what round four. And this time it wants half double crochet in the next two so one half double crochet in the first one one half double crochet in the second one and then the half double crochet increase in the next so two half double crochet in the third and we'll repeat that around so i'll do my first half double crochet move my stitch marker and 
And, oh, no, come back. Half double crochet in the next. Now in the next here, two half double crochet. So if you're counting one, two, three, four, this would be three and four. And repeat around, I'll do one more. So one, two, and then in this next one, three and four. So repeat that around. I'll come back before the round is over so that I can do the join. Um, also, the kits come with these um, and they're fine and they're functional and they work fine. If you happen to see a pack of like the metal, they're like somewhat sharp. You know, they're definitely not like totally blunt, but these, they're pretty handy. They're pretty nice. Um, I use them like if I'm just making something and not following the kit and using what the kit gives me, I use those ones. So if you see one and want to try one, you might find that it gives you better control, um, better, uh, like accuracy. So anyways... I will finish out this round to the end and then be back. Okay, so I'm at the last set of, you know, half double crochet in the next two and then an increase. And um, I mentioned the tightening earlier. And in reality, what that ends up looking like, because I once I get going, it's I go a little faster is I do that and then I pull just like that much just to tighten it down a little but when I'm doing it faster um it's oh I split a loop there I'm trying to do things faster don't don't do this to me okay so there's my two half double this is where my two in one goes um it just looks kind of like that when I do it as I go quickly. So I'm still doing it. Um, even if it's not as noticeable as when I demonstrate it. So here we are at the end of this round. We got our slip to join. We got our chain one. We are going to join to our first single crochet there. Okay. Uh, next round, we're stepping it up again. So we're going to chain one. And we are going to half double crochet in the next three. So one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So I'll do this first one. One. Move my stitch marker. Okay. So one. Two. Three and now increase two in this one. And repeat that around until we get back to our slip stitch. Okay, so here's an example of being able to recognize the two double crochet or two half double crochet and one coming into uh, usefulness because I'm near the end and I've just realized that my interval isn't going to work out. You know how I said you're supposed to end one uh, whatever is at the end in the bracket. So this is my increase. So one, two, three. I have an extra stitch here. The increase will go here. I have extra one here. Most likely I made a mistake in the intervals. And when you're doing for a whole round, you're doing two and then increase and then three and then increase. It can be easy sometimes to forget and do the wrong interval. So if you know how to spot them, 
I can go back to the beginning and I can look at this and say, okay, this is one single half double crochet in here. This is one. This is one half double crochet. This is two. And then I can find where I have made a mistake. So one, 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 two, one, one, two. So I slipped back and did two instead of three half double crochets. So I, it makes it easier to find my mistake and fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out to here. So now I have one, two, three, double, one, two, three, double, one, two, three. And now I'll just pick up where I left off with the double in the next stitch, which I'm a little bit like allergy fuzzy. So it's harder to remember what round I'm on, but it's easy to lose track and lose count. That's why I tend to have these checks at the end of every row. If your intervals don't line up, I count my stitches every couple rows to make sure that I am where I'm meant to be. So there you go. I'll be back after I work my way back around. Okay, so here we are at the end of that round for the last set. Um, one... two, three, and then increase in the last here. Usually as I go, my um, slip stitch to join gets smaller, like maybe harder to see, but it's still there. The chain one sometimes gets smaller. Uh, so I don't know if that'll happen to you, but so our next round, we're going to step it up again and uh, it'll be four half double crochet. Um, so I'm going to do the slip stitch to join. There we go. So this is end of round five. Chain one and half double crochet in the next four. So I'm gonna do my first one here. Move my stitch marker, so that's one. Two. Three. four and then two in the next. Okay, so now we repeat that all the way around and then I'll be back for the join. Okay, so here's the end of round six. I did the last set already. There's the slip and there's the chain one. Also, I mentioned at the beginning right side and wrong side. Um, and I said that this right side would be, in this case, the one like facing out. And then wrong side is what will be like facing what the pot will be in basically. But just for reference, this is the right side here. And this is the wrong side here. So if you, if you want, you can certainly, when you start, put a stitch marker like I said, on this side to keep track. Right now, since we have this tail, um, it's easier to tell. But sometimes once you, if you weave the tail in, it can be harder to tell. Okay, so I'm going to slip to join. And then the next couple rounds, 
several rounds are going to be half double crochet in each stitch around, which is pretty simple. I usually only demonstrate or try to remember to only demonstrate that like once in a kit because it's it's just one half double crochet in each stitch around. If you can do the intervals, you can do this one. Um, what I normally do is I will get um, a pencil or a pen or something and I'll write down the numbers of the rows that are being included. So this is through 14. I'll write them down. I don't know if you can see the pencil. It doesn't really matter. And then as I go, I'll mark them off. So, you know, you can count and it's, oh, counting. Let me, okay. So we're working in a circle outwards. Um, So counting is, in this case, I think pretty simple. You're just counting sort of your, you have these like concentric circles of your stitches. So starting in the center, because this is what we, these are our eight half double that we started with here in the center. We got, this is one, then this is two, three, four, five, six. That's how we count our rounds. So again, we got this center one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I already said I have allergies, but I'm a little bit drowsy, so I'm forgetting a couple of things like counting rounds. Anyway, we've done that now. Um, so half double crochet in each stitch around. I'll do this one. And then the rest of them, I will do off camera and just mark them off as I go. It helps me keep track better. If you're anything like me, it's pretty easy to get distracted when counting and lose your place. So exactly what it sounds like. Just one in every stitch around. This uh, kit is going to be the biggest result um, so far. And I wasn't necessarily going to buy the pot or anything to go with it. But I might have like a cup or something or a candle that I can put in here at the end to see what it looks like. Now the way that this is curling kind of up into a bowl like towards me, when I talked about the right side, this is the side that we want to be the outside that people will see. And um, you can wait and just sort of turn it inside out or right side out rather eventually like have it be working like this and then eventually just swap it. I usually kind of keep curling it back as I go just out of habit so that the right side's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so we're working on the head a lot of times when I start with this method, um, I like to close up the middle opening there, uh, which I will probably do. I'll thread that end onto a needle, loop it around those stitches in there, tighten it up, and uh, tie it off so it's less of an opening. just because I think it looks a little bit better. So 
less visibility for the stuffing. Okay, so we're getting up on the end here. Our last stitch of this round. Okay, so there's our slip to join. There's our chain one. I'm going to slip to join. and mark off that round. So that was seven. Do the same thing for rounds eight through 14. Remembering to join to the first stitch of the round every time and chain one at the beginning of the round and move your stitch marker if you're using it. And I will be back after round 14. I just noticed um, where it says the measurement through round seven, so um, which is just where we happen to be. So I'm gonna measure this here, and we're just about a little bit shy of four inches there, and it says um four inches through round seven and like i said i tend to i do that tightening down just so that i won't run out of the yarn because i've had that issue with a couple of kits so should be fine for that for the size which is good so i'll do those rounds and be back. one thing i want to point out while doing these these rounds of half double crochet in each stitch around is that before we were doing increase rounds and um now we're kind of building up the walls so to speak and so you're reaching a little further to get to your stitches um and the reason that i point that out is i think for a beginner it can be easier at this point to get tricked into working into the corner of a stitch you just you just um worked into so like before it was less of this visible. It was only about this much of the corner or so visible. But now, because of the way we're, we're slanted for this row, because we're, we're not increasing, um, there's more of it. You know, it almost looks like a full stitch there. So you're reaching a little further. I'm not working into here. I'm working into here as I go around. So... Finish this one up and now it's again a little bit of a reach and that's fine. Um, I just wanted to point that out because that was something that when I was beginning and it's just in these kind of where we're curving and we were increasing and now we're holding the same amount um, as it takes that shape. So be mindful of that. And don't get tricked by those little corners. I will be back. Okay. I'm at the end of round 14. For the slip stitch. Skipping the slip and the chain one. Slip stitch to the first. Single crochet of that round. Let me take this out so I can get in there. Now, um, if any of you have, like, noticed and are distressed, your join, like, if you look at this wall, everything looks pretty, like, the same. If you look here, you can see kind of a diagonal, um, 
it's just a little bit different. If you don't, if you can't differentiate, that's fine. But if you see this being diagonal, this is your join where you joined in each row and you think, oh no, I've done something wrong because this is not a straight line. That's not how it works. It is naturally um, diagonal like that. So don't, don't worry about that. Um, so this is 14 rounds. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And now the last round is a decrease round. So we haven't done decreases yet. Um, so basically we're going to half double crochet in the next four, kind of like we did previously. So I'm going to do the first one, put the stitch marker back. But instead of, I lost half my loop there. Instead of doing an increase at the end of the four, we're going to do a decrease. And a decrease is where, it's the opposite. It's where you work one single crochet or one half double crochet, whatever crochet you're doing, across two stitches instead of two and one. So that's one. two, three, and this is four. Now, um, we're going to half double crochet two together, and then we're going to, like we did before, just repeat that pattern around. So four half double crochets, and then one half double crochet two together, which will take up two tops of stitches here yarn over, insert under the first stitch, and yarn over and pull that loop up. Instead of finishing this, you're now going to basically kind of start a half double in the next. So yarn over, insert under the next stitch in the line. So if we're looking at this, we got the edges here of the one that we already went under and here's our next one I'm gonna slip under there pull up another loop and there's now five loops on the hook yarn over pull through all five and now where we used to have two stitches we now have one up top here and then like I've mentioned before with decreases they tend to lean to one side, so don't get tricked by the little corner of that stitch. It'll be look a little bit bigger again. So we'll start the next section, yarn over, insert under the next stitch in the round. So over here, not right here. For our half double crochet, one, two, three, four and then again yarn over insert under both loops of the next stitch in the round yarn over pull up a loop yarn over insert under both loops of the next stitch in the round yarn over pull up a loop five loops on your hook yarn over pull through all five loops so we'll just continue this around with four half double crochet. And then our decrease. So yarn over, insert under the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, Insert under the next stitch after that, pull up the loop, five loops, yarn over, pull through all five. And then continue around. Now, when you make an increase, which is two of the stitch in one stitch, 
Um, visually. You get kind of this uh, little this little bigger hole I think of it as like a little window or an arch like you see these openings are smaller and then this one's a little bigger this one's a little bigger these ones are smaller um decreases have this diagonal loop to them that your other stitches don't really have um So we got this diagonal line, one there, and that's how you can spot those. And also they are thicker than the surrounding area. You can feel them. So that's good information to have. Yarn over, insert under the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over again, Insert under the stitch after that, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all five loops, and then continue. One, two, three, four. So the thing that happens often in these types of rows is if I get distracted, I'm like, okay, how many half double crochet did I just do? If I can just spot one of these real quick, if I know I was counting properly up until then, I just find my last one and say, okay, one, two, three, four, or, you know, from the top, one, two, three, four. And then I don't have to count all the way back from the beginning. Yarn over, insert under the next, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert under the next after that, pull up a loop, five loops on your hook. Pull through all five. Another decrease. And continuing. Now this is the last round for this and this will be where this one ends. Like I mentioned, I have allergy stuff and so it's a little bit difficult to focus. Okay, so decrease. And then our last one, one. Two, three, four, and end on that decrease. Okay, there's our slip to join, there's our chain one. Now, we've done that around. Before I slip to join, let's count. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. So, it says fasten off, leaving a long tail for sewing and weave and tail at the beginning of the first round. So, I'm going to slip stitch this first stitch here to fasten off like we did before. This time I'm going to tighten this pretty good like that. And then I'm going to guesstimate a tail for sewing just by kind of wrapping this around about twice. And cut this end. 
and pull this through and we'll just leave that end there to sew this later. Now as far as weaving in this end down here, you can see the opening here is um, kind of big. So when I weave this in, I'm going to tighten it up a little and then tie it off. Okay, so I got the needle that comes with the kit. I don't have a long tail here, so I'm going to actually put my needle through the stitches first. So I'm just going through the loops here of the first half double crochets we made. And this is this part's optional, like this is already tied off, so you could just weave in, but I figured it looks a little bit better to me. A little neater, so I'm going to take this all the way around the circle. And now I'm going to pull to tighten. Like that. And now I'm going to slip under some of these stitches again. Not as many this time because now I'm just tying off. And if you decide not to tighten that up then you don't have to do any of this part just the weaving in part that I'm gonna do next so I'm gonna hold on to this so I can't pull this all the way through take that and feed it through this to tie it down to keep it a little smaller okay now the actual weaving in part that they ask you to do um, I'm just gonna slip under a couple stitches and this is just to secure the end weave it in so it doesn't stick out through the work or anything like that and I'm basically just gonna do the same motion again except this time I'm just weaving the end in to get rid of it and I'll probably after this one whatever's left I'll just trim it down a little and then that'll be where I leave it Okay, so I'll trim that, turn this back so that right side is facing and wrong side is on the inside, and that is the first, first piece, step one completed. So I will hopefully be back soon with um, step two.